welcome and thanks for joining me right here on my channel the solution is you if you enjoy the content be sure to hit that like button subscribe to my channel with that let me go ahead and get into today's subject now today's topic you're fired four likely scenarios that show your time is up now, each of us has been in a situation where you got fired or your job was at risk with an employer. Getting fired is an unpleasant situation. It impacts all of your plans and your money and the people who are dependent on you. You may be a person who was about to make some huge purchase and unexpectedly you got noticed that you would no longer have your job and that's never a good thing. And most times in situations where you are about to lose your job, there are some signs involved that you may or may not have paid attention to. So let me go ahead and get into number one of the four likely scenarios that show your time is up. Number one, running late. So when you started training, you may have found that you had no problem getting to work on time. You have a new job or a position, so you're very excited. Now you can pay off the past due bills or you can buy one of the latest gadgets that you've always wanted. And when you got this position, this was the breakthrough that you needed. And you found yourself arriving at work 30 minutes prior to your work schedule. So, you were very excited and you had no problem getting to work. But as time went by, say, you know, seven to eight months has passed since you first started at this particular job. You started running late. Now, this could have could be due to a number of reasons. It could be due to the position wasn't what you thought it would be. It may have been due to. You had no enthusiasm because of the rude customers. It may have been that you had a second job. And so maybe you're working a full time, then you had a part time job and you're just tired. So you can't get up as quick as you used to. So you're arriving to work a little later than normal. So, but whatever the situation is, the employer is paying you to be on time. And so at this particular job, you start making it a habit to arrive late at work. So this is a, a situation where you may have accumulated a number of write-ups. So usually at jobs, they give you a, a verbal warning. And then that verbal warning turns into a written and usually you have to have maybe two to three written warnings before you're out the door. So you have already gotten about two write-ups. And you work at a job where you have your teammates working right in the vicinity of where your workspace is. So they kind of got an idea of what's going on and who's doing what. And everybody one talks to each other to let them know the latest of what's going on in the department as it relates to any new procedures or policies and also any new things that are coming down the pipeline as far as being rolled out to the customer. So everyone in your department is, is pretty much well aware of anything new coming along. And so you find yourself one day on your way to work. 
So you're running out the house and you know that you can arrive at work maybe right 10 minutes before it's time for your shift to start. So you get up and you're in your car and it's raining outside. And but the traffic is pretty clear out there. And so you believe that you have no trouble getting to work on time. So you're driving along, you're, you're, you're racing along at top speed, trying to make it on time. And it's raining outside, so you have to somewhat be kind of careful. You don't want to spin out. And so while you're driving along, the roads are clear. Suddenly, you see red lights ahead. And then you find that there's a major accident that occurred just 10 minutes away from your job. So now you're trying to find a, a exit point, a detour point, but it's too late because the cars have now backed up and you find yourself in traffic. So now you, you're trying to gauge if you have enough time to get to work versus should you call your supervisor and leave some sort of a notice, but you don't want to do that because you already know that you have about two write-ups. So you're kind of sitting in traffic and you're looking at your watch and you, you're looking at the scene up ahead and then you're looking down at your watch and you're trying to determine if you need to make that call. So finally, traffic starts to move some and the first side street that you find, you take it. So you're racing down the side streets, you're looking at your watch, you're up against time and... You're trying to go as fast as you can, but you're trying to be careful at the same time due to the rain. So you pull up to the job. You got about two minutes to get upstairs and get situated at your desk, get logged in. So you're rushing through the building. You get to your seat. You have your coworkers looking at you. And when you log in, you find that you are three minutes late. And there's no grace period. So you get logged in, get everything set up at your desk. And you have your coworkers looking at you, but they're not saying much of anything. So you tell everybody good morning and they nodding their head, but not saying nothing. And you get up to go and get coffee. So you leave your desk, you log out. You go in and grab you some coffee. That takes about five minutes. You come back to your desk, log back in. And as soon as you log back in, you get a chat message from your supervisor telling you to log out and come see them. Now, you know what time it is. Number two. So let's say you are a security guard and you're working the night shift. And your job is to secure a 15 floor building that holds showrooms that have jewelry and clothing and other merchandise inside. So you have multiple vendors that showcase their merchandise on the weekends. And your job is to make sure that these showrooms are all secure. And there are various checkpoints within the building that you have to connect with at certain times to show that you're actually doing your job. And you're the only guard in the building, so it's all up to you to make sure that everything gets secure. And so this one night, you're making your rounds. So, you know, you start from the bottom floor and you're working your way up. And you make your first round. Usually you make about 10 rounds throughout the night. So you make your first round. And you go and get you a drink of water. You look at your phone. You, you watch your movie or two. Then you go and you do your second round. And at this time, you go ahead and you take your seat in a nice comfortable position in a uh, break room. It's dark in there, you know, and 
you kind of just enjoying yourself. You continue to watch your movies and you start dozing off. And, you know, the thing about this job is that it's so relaxed. You don't have anybody checking over you because you've already shown that you're perfectly capable of uh, doing the job and making the checkpoints and nobody's checking up on you. So there's no micromanaging going on. And so you're like on your second round It's early in the night and you're in the dim uh, break room. You know, you don't want to draw any unnecessary attention to yourself. So you're sitting in there and you're watching one of your favorite movies and you find yourself dozing off. So you get up, you know, you 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 have a Coke that you put away, you know, for your lunch. So you go ahead and break out the Coke a little early and you're drinking that, trying to stay up and you're watching your movie. You may get up and check a door or two and you sit back down and you start dozing off. And before you know it, you woke up and you had been asleep for about an hour. Now, at this building, there are vendors who are allowed to come in and out as they choose because the place is open 24 hours a day. Your job is just to make sure that the rooms that are supposed to be secure are secure. And... You're down in the break room. You you seem to have fell asleep for about an hour or so. And you check your radio. Your radio is on. But however, your phone had died due to you watching the movies. So you go and you plug your phone in just to get some juice. And when you plugged your phone in, you found that there was five missed calls. And you checked your voicemail and it was your manager checking on you because he wanted to ask you a question, but there was no response. So you go ahead and you call your manager back and your manager wanted to know why you didn't respond. And you told him that, you know, your, your phone had died and that, you know, you had your radio turned down. And the manager was trying to inform you that one of the showrooms had got broken into and some merchandise was missing. And so you go to the showroom and sure enough, glass was broken out and you don't know how this could have happened because you've manned this area every day for the last three months. And everything has been fine. But the day that you doze off for about an hour, something happens. So now you have to write a report and have that report turned in immediately to your management team. And you have a meeting with the manager to go over what happened and where you were at the time. And your manager determines that an investigation needs to take place since it happened on your watch and you need to be suspended without pay pending the outcome of the investigation. So you've been suspended without pay for three days. So three days go by and your manager is telling you to come on up to the job because a decision has been made. So once you get to the job, you go to the manager's office and the manager has his manager in there. And so he tells you to sit down and he breaks out uh, what looks to be some type of form with a lot of writing on it. And at the bottom, it has a place for you to put your signature and his manager is sitting, you know, j just right in the back of the room listening but not saying anything. And your manager is telling you, unfortunately, due to the uh, results of the investigation and based on you not responding as you should have, that you put the company in jeopardy. You know what's happening next.
Now, number three of the four likely scenarios that show your time is up. So let's say you're at a call center. And at call centers, it's not unusual for someone to get promoted to lead. So this is an individual who has been designated to be one of the best on the floor and is somewhat qualified to go around and help others with their calls. This means any questions that the reps on the floor may have, they can go to the lead representative as a person who is knowledgeable and well-versed of everything that may be happening on a particular project or with a particular customer and can provide the information needed in place of the supervisor who may be handling other duties. And as a representative on the floor, you have time between calls so you can talk to your other peers who are nearby taking the same type of calls you are. And in between a call, you're discussing with one of your peers that you've made a major purchase and you're just looking at closing on this home that you've always wanted. And for the last few months, all you talked about was this particular home. You've been showing pictures and you have showed how you're going to get the living room decorated and the type of uh, toweling that you're going to put down and you're showing pictures of the front in the backyard and you, you just really talking about this home that is your dream home and that you finally about to close on this home. So everybody's excited, you know, you're talking, you're taking calls and you can't wait till you get off the call because you're going to go into detail about your family and, and when y'all plan to move in and, and all of this type of talk. So you have your lead walking by and they're listening in on the situation, but can't talk too much because they have to help others. And at this particular job, you have to read your disclosures verbatim and you've been written up several times because you're not sticking to the script. You've been focused so much on your home that when the call comes in, you're missing out on some of the important wording that you have to go over with your customers. This could put the company in legal jeopardy and you know, the company is really depending on you to come through uh, with going over the script verbatim so the customers clearly understand what they're getting into. And you've been warned several times to stick to the script. And by you being so distracted with the home, you haven't been sticking to that script. And so... You know, you find yourself at your desk, you, you, you are so engaged with your co-workers, y'all laughing and talking, and suddenly the lead representative tells you to log off and come with them. So, you know, you're just thinking, uh, you know, nothing of it. You know, sometimes you're told to log off, you know, matter of fact, each of you are told to log off at some point to come back and, you know, take a look at your numbers. So this isn't anything that was unusual. So you go back with the lead and, you know, you're telling them, Hey, you know, my number's been great. You know what I'm saying? So I wonder what this is all about because, you know, last year you had some of the best numbers. So you in the lead, y'all go in the room and it's your supervisor. The supervisor is smiling, telling you to have a seat. And so you sit down, the supervisor is smiling. So everything appears to be good. And the lead is right there in the room with you. And the supervisor has started out the conversation by saying, well, you know, you're one of our best employees. Last month, your numbers were on point and, you know, that's, to be appreciated. You know, we always expect for our employees to have great numbers. 
However, we also expect for our script to be re read verbatim because these are our legal disclosures and it's important for our, not only for our customers, but for our client that we're working for. And they want to make sure that there's no liability and the verbatim script is very necessary to ensure everybody is complying with regulations so that the company is not fine. And you've been warned several times that you have not been reading the script verbatim and they just can't afford a third time for this to happen. And based on two write-ups that have taken place within the last 12 months, you have worked up your third and final write-up. And as of today, they're going to have to let you go. So now you need to turn in your badge and the lead is going to walk you out to the parking lot. Now, you know, these call centers do not play games. Number four. So you find yourself in a training class. This training class at this particular job lasts about four weeks. And each week they need to test each person to determine if you are retaining the information. The last thing they want to do is have you graduate a class, go out to the floor, and you haven't learned anything, or you're just milking them for the training money. So every week there is a test, and on this test you have to make a minimum of a 70. So this is a well-known employer, Fortune 500 type company. You've always envisioned yourself working for this company. This is one of those companies that is very hard for anyone to get on or, or to, to become employed with. And you got the interview and you got a chance to start. So the only thing you need to do is score no less than a 70 and you should have no problem moving forward in the company. So now you're in week two of the training class. Week one was a breeze. And during week two, the information was a little bit more than what you expected, but everything appears to be okay. You know, you take your test at the end of the week. Everything is fine. You score 85. Now you're in week three. So in week three, um, it's not what you thought it was. You know, you, you expected things to get a little tougher, but however, um, the tests appeared to be okay. So, you know, you're taking the test for what you learned in week three and towards the middle of the test, you know, they were asking you some questions that you weren't as familiar with and, but, you know, it was multiple choice. So you were feeling good about the selections that you made on your multiple choice test. And so later that day, you, you go to lunch, uh, you come back, you get your test results, and this is a Friday. So you get your test results after lunch, and you, and you made a 69. So you scored a 69 on your test, 70 was what was needed, and you're like, man, one point away. So... You know, you finish out your, your week on that Friday. So you come in on Monday. Everything is good. You go through the training. Uh, Tuesday, everything is good. You know, everything is good. So Wednesday, you come in. You're thinking, you know, somebody's going to definitely say something to me. I mean, you made a 69. So, you know, Wednesday passes. Thursday passes. Everything's good. So 69 surely was enough to get you by one point, you know, round it up and you made 70. So on Friday, you are sitting in the training class. There's like 20 of you that that are remaining and your manager says that we're going to do an exercise where I need everyone to split up into pairs and I'm give you, giving you markers, I'm giving you paper, 
and I need you to do a special project. So he lays out what he needs you to do. And you're going to be breaking out in pairs and you're going to go over to the next room and work on this project in pairs. So you get up and you are leaving your stuff behind and you grab your partner and you've already agreed that you two are going to be working together in the next room on this particular project. And right when you get ready to walk out the room with your partner, your manager comes and grabs you and says, I need you to go with me. So you're thinking, OK, well, I'm going to get some type of additional instruction or something as it relates to the project that you're working on, because it's been a whole week from when you took your test. So you walk in with your manager and you're walking down a hall. So you're walking and you're thinking nothing, you know, out of the ordinary is going to be going on with this particular situation. So you're walking with him and then you see that there are four other individuals waiting at the end of the hallway. So you and your manager get to the, you get to the individuals and remember you left your stuff in the classroom because you were going to go over to the next room and work on this project with your partner. So you and your manager are walking and you finally arrive at the other four individuals who are waiting at the end of the hallway. And when you get there, it's the head guy who was there at the very beginning of the training. And it's two other people wearing what looks to be like a suit. So you have your manager standing there and the guy, head guy from the very first start of the training is there. And he's talking to you. He's saying, well, you know, when we first started the training class, we informed you, each of you guys, that we expect you to pass your test and that a minimum of 70 is needed on the test. And based on your results, you did not pass your last test. And because of that, he's going to have to take your badge and you're looking in disbelief because you worked a whole nother week. And no one has said anything. So you go ahead and give your badge and you say, but I need to go back and get my belongings that I left. He said, never mind. We got those right here. So the two individuals who were security who already had put together an effort to get your stuff secretly. And they already had your, your belongings down at the area where you're going to be going out the door into the parking lot to your car. So they're overseeing you get into your vehicle and they wish you well. And that's the end of your journey with that employer. Well, I thank you for listening to me today. Please understand that the solution is you with that. Have a great day.